Welcome to Engine Battles. In this series, we challenge developers to create a video game using different game engines and around a given theme. In the spirit of the season, the theme this time around is horror. Introducing our challengers, we've got Moonleaf Studio, who represents the Unity game engine. Gorka is the Unreal Champion. And finally, the Fluffy Potato will use Godot. So with that said, let's start with the warm-up. Each dev gets to create a tiny horror game in 10 minutes. Hey, I'm Iridus. I work on Have, a game where you have to control two characters at once. Wishlist Have on Steam and check out the devlogs on our YouTube channel. When I thought about making a horror game in only 10 minutes, I instantly got the idea to try recreating an iconic browser game called the Scary Maze. Hopefully my game will break less computers though. So the first thing that I did was create a sphere that follows the player's cursor. Then I made it so that the sphere reacts to wall collisions and restarts the level if a wall has been touched. I also quickly built a short maze level and finally added our spooky friend who will appear once the player touches a specific trigger in the level. What's up guys, I'm Gorka Games and I make Unreal Engine 5 videos and tutorials on my YouTube channel. So I quickly thought of an idea. You have to walk across a pitch black corridor where a ghost will be wandering around and you have to escape by of course not being caught. Pretty simple right? I got to work by creating a new Unreal project and a level. And I started placing some basic cubes which I turned into walls to begin creating the corridor. As I created the project using the first person template, which of course was a clever idea given that I had 10 minutes to make this, I already could move around. Then I turned the level to be completely dark and just added a light at the exit to indicate the player the correct way. Now that we got the level pretty much set and with only 5 minutes remaining, I quickly began making the ghost AI, where he would just pick a random point and walk towards it. Nothing crazy. <laughs> Now, it was pretty boring. What did he say? So I added him the ability to sense players by sight and now he will chase you and simply, yeah. I didn't have time to make a jump scare. With that, I just created a death which just reloads the level and added a text at the end of the corridor to indicate the player that he won. Now with that, the game was complete. Now remember that this was made in only 10 minutes, so please don't judge me. Hey, I'm the fluffy potato. I obviously sound like a zombie in the spirit of Halloween and definitely not because of untimely congestion. I primarily work with Python and iGame, but I've been learning Godot recently for some VR projects. My lack of Godot experience is likely in line with many others who have been picking up Godot recently, so this will be quite an interesting challenge. For the 10 minute horror game, I decided to go for a simple jump scare. I created a button in MS Paint that says click, which I hooked up to a click sound that I got off of free sound. The jump scare is another MS Paint drawing that pops up randomly while clicking. Unfortunately my jump scare sound wasn't importing so I had to open it up in Audacity and export it as an AUG to get rid of potential encoding errors, which took up a fair bit of my time. Although in the end, I had made this working horror game in 10 minutes. Now, before we continue, I have a question to ask you. Have you ever wanted to learn how to make your own video games? If the answer is yes, then we suggest you watch our free three parts course on how to make and publish your very first video game. You'll learn the fundamentals and end up with a complete beautiful little game which you can then expand upon if you like. It's your first step into this incredible craft. Just click on the link in the description to get started it's our gift to you. The challengers will now step up their game and build momentum. Each dev gets one hour to make a new horror game. For the one hour game, I had some more time to work with, so I decided to try making something more than just a simple jump scare. First of all, I got some 3D model packs from the asset store and built a creepy basement corridor. Then I configured the lighting settings to make it way darker, added a basic first person player movement, created a generator that the player could interact with to turn on the lights, imported a scary looking fella character model, made a few animations, one for the first reel of the monster, and one for the game's ending. So my idea was simple, you are a ghost investigator who arrives at a haunted mansion, and you have to find the ghost, take a picture of it, and capture the ghost. So I created a new project and began working on the first person character. As I had more time, I did create it from scratch, and with some nodes connected and the input set up, we can move and look around. Cool. 
With that said, I added a flashlight to the player's head as it will add to the horror experience and help you see a bit better the surroundings. Now that we got a bit of the player experience, literally the most basic thing in the world, I began creating the ghost AI. So to get a bit more of the feeling of how this is going, I imported an insane horror mansion asset pack. Yes, yes, I did use an asset pack. Did you think I was going to freaking model a whole mansion in less than one hour? It does look insane, so whatever is the end result, it will be guaranteed to look good. I added the player and the AI to the level, and it does look pretty cool. I began working on the key mechanic to complete the gameplay core loop, which is the camera flash. You can equip and unequip between your camera and your flashlight, and then hold the left mouse button to charge the battery and take a shot. This will create a big flash which will create a picture and also capture the ghost. I then replaced the ghost with a cooler model, added some sounds, and this is the end result. I think that one hour is enough time to make the jump to 3D, which is quite important for most horror games due to the dependence on immersion. I don't want to just have three simple jump scares for the three games though. So I opted to go for a different breed of horror. I started up Blockbench, which by the way is way better for pixel art in 3D than Blender is. With less than an hour of experience with Blockbench, I could work over 5 times faster than I could with Blender. I made some models to create a basic platform for the player to stand on. It's quite a cheerful environment, so I modeled some smiley faces, which I made float up from below while staring at the player. I pulled a laughing sound off of free sound, which I played from the faces with spatial audio, so the player is surrounded by laughing. After enough time, the laughing pitch suddenly drops, and the lighting fades away to create a very unsettling scene. Okay, each dev has built a miniature horror experience in 10 minutes and then one hour, effectively warming up for the grand finale. A complete day to bring a terrifying world to life. And once we reveal all games, let us know in the comments which engine takes the crown, in your opinion. With that said, let's begin with Mini Studio using Unity. For the last project, I wanted to make a really immersive horror experience. To start with, I used Unity's terrain tool and loads of 3D assets to build a pine forest. That includes a creepy looking shed and a graveyard. Then I made a first person character controller, added a sprinting mechanic as well as some movement animations. After that I did some work on the enemies. If the player looks at the enemy for too long, the player will be killed. On the other hand, if the player looks away from the enemy, the enemy will be unable to attack the player. And on top of that, there's a chance that the enemy will disappear. Later on, I added the main objective, which is to search the forest for a hidden package. Once the package is found, the player has to return back to the spawn point and enter the car to leave the forest. Finally, to polish the game even more, I added some voice lines. Go get us that package, we're gonna be rich man! And some additional minor interactions. My idea for this game was simple, you're a lost hiker in a snowy forest, and you have to maintain your temperature by not freezing to death. The thing is there will be a monster lurking around the forest which will try to hunt you. An interesting key element to this game is that your microphone will be always on, meaning that if you speak loudly or scream, he will hear you and start to you know, chase you and kill you. And I think that this will add some unique moments into the game and it will be very interesting. The first thing I did was create a blank and real project and worked once again on a simple first person controller and added a flashlight. Then I began creating the temperature mechanic, so you will have a slider at the bottom of the screen to indicate how cold you are. And as time goes, you'll be colder and colder and eventually freeze. But what I did was create a safe zone, if you're inside of it, you'll be covered from the freezing temperatures and slowly warm up. Now that I had some of the basics, I decided to begin making the environment as it will help me visualize what I had to do next. So I imported an awesome forest asset pack, which you can add snow into it, and it looks awesome. Now this was a demo level, so I went ahead and began to create a new empty level and started sculpting the landscape, which will be the actual map. Now to save time, what I did was use a noise material to add mountains into the landscape virtually. With that, I added the ground material that came with the pack, which looks awesome, and began working on the Priscilla Fall Spawner using PCG. What I did was randomly sample some points into the surface and then turn those points into actual trees. 
and this was looking great. I added the snow into the level and started working on the cactus body to make it more immersive and add head bobbing. With that, I added more sounds such as footsteps which just really enhanced the gameplay and made it very, very dark. With environment said, I began working on the microphone mechanic. Okay, it's working. This is going to be very interesting. Now I have the microphone mechanic set, but there's no AA monster to hear me yet. So I downloaded this awesome mother from the Mark's place and made a simple AI for him. So he'll be patrolling around, but if he sees you or hears you because you talked, he'll get you. The trick to make you speak was to add a little jump scares that will happen every so often, so you will gasp and it will make a noise and basically he will chase you. So what I did was add a little jump scare that will happen when he finally gets you. And made some more things such as main menu, audio enhancements, and I all just polish the whole game. So that's it for my game that I made in one day. I wanted to make a more traditional horror game for the one day timeline and crank up the immersion by using VR. So I modeled some dungeon like rooms, which I combined together to make one bigger map. To give it some life, I added a wiggle shader to the plants. Then I used a standard VR player script from one of my other projects so the player can run and turn with standard VR controls and physics. Since I'm not too comfortable with animation yet, I opted to make the enemy a worm made up of orbs that sort of swims through the map and closes in on the player. The worm can be scared off by throwing these bursting orbs that you can find on the ground. The gameplay loop is a bit arcadey, so I made a menu and a score system to accommodate it. Finally, I set up all the sound effects with lots of spatial indicators for the worm so you could theoretically get quite good at the game with a good ear. I also composed this short track for the background music. Unfortunately, I was out of time at this point. While the mechanics could use some tweaking, I was pretty happy with the result. I do really like the environment. It really feels like spooky. That package. We're gonna oh. be rich, man. Is that his I'm voice? I'm assuming it's down this way? Oh, hello, thing. What if I walk up to it? Hello. Okay. <laughs> oh god, what- what is this things? <gasps> okay, that- <laughs> Alright, I did not expect that. Oh, that actually- that actually is good. <laughs> storage? Great- uh, storage? Of course, 100%. Alright, my goodness. Doors do not open by themselves. The package is in the graveyard. Is this it? Press E to pick up the package. Is this where they start running at me? Oh, that's... that's... Oh, oh okay. I thought I was gonna have to run around with the package in front of my face so I can't see anything. So he's not following me. Oh. There's a lot of these things. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. It didn't scare me this time because I knew it. Whoa, 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 they're walking. Oh, I found the car. It's crazy. I escaped. Wow, that was actually a very cool game. I really enjoyed it. Well done, man. That's crazy. You will have your microphone always on, which means that you will need to speak quietly and not be scared. This concept actually really reminds me of the latest horror game that you have to survive for 18 minutes without screaming into the microphone. Does my mic work? Oh yeah, it does pick up my mic. What the hell was that? Okay, so he can also see me. So he's already chasing me, that's good. I just go, okay, nope. Oh, he's too fast. <laughs> Wait a second. I think this is how you win. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna sit here until the time runs out. Yeah, I guess I'll just wait here. I have been rescued and then I was caught again. I think I'm gonna have to give up on this because I'm almost certain getting them stuck on the wall was both a fluke and also not the way you're supposed to beat this game. Wait, I didn't read the instructions. What do I have to do? Use this. Oh no, no! I didn't want to throw it. So I guess I just have to survive for as long as possible. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, 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 man. How do I even like? Do I just throw these? Okay, yeah, I do. 
Oh no! Get away from me, man! Oh no! I don't have any orbs! No! Wait! 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 I need more orbs! Give me the orb! <laughs> Give me that! <laughs> I need more orbs! My my tiny sphere hands can cannot deal with it alone. You can play all games using the links in the description and let us know which other engines you would like to see in this series. Remember that if you also want to learn how to make your very own games, we've handcrafted a complete free course that will teach you how to make your very first game. Just take the leap using the link in the description and see you real soon guys. Cheers.